right, guys, you see here a complete layout of a wind turbine. Now, this is a small wind turbine. That's basically from 2,500 watts down to uh, 100 watts. This is a good layout, and it's going to give you some really good information and details. All the materials you see, including proven products, proven items, links to where you can get them, look below the video. Hit the show more, and if you've got a cell phone, you got one of them little down arrows right down there, hit that. It's going to give you the upload date and all that data and all that jazz, and it's going to give you all the links to where this stuff comes from, including this special turbine. Let's get in here, and we're going to take a look-see at it. I want you to share this video. I want you to give it that thumbs up. Subscribe if you have to, um, if you haven't already. And there's going to be a lot more. That way you get notified of more upcoming information, including the install and how we're going to make this thing work. This is a brand new turbine. It kind of won't be out for another few days, but I get them a little early. Now I can show it to you. Let's get over here. Bringing y'all a new turbine. Now you can see this one. It's in a large box. This is a brand new for 2020 turbine. Um, they've upgraded the stators in them to make this a 1224 unit. It's it's a little bit hard to explain, but they they will work on 12 and 24 volt because their open voltage in 24 volt will hit about 60. That's normal, and about 40 in 12 volt. That's normal. So they're perfect for this. And this is an 800 watt. We are um, currently in a battery bank of 12.79. I've set up a rectifier of a battery with a line connecting back to the main bank so we can do a pretty good hit. Over here, I have a, just an example, inverter, rectifier, resistors, an Olympic Power Controls controller, SSRs, which are solid state relays, heat sinks, and we've drawn this big picture out. You probably saw there at the beginning of the video. This here is the typical normal way that you set up a turbine. Small turbine produces three phase. It would look like that if you have an oscilloscope. And then produces DC coming off of the rectifier in a format like that. Now the reason that is, I want to give you a good close-up of the diodes and how they're laid out. So if you understand any of that. Now, that's the basics. So over here, you have your storage battery. You have your controller. Now, the controller just takes and senses power, and then it runs an SSR. The SSR dumps the load um, through a uh, wiring to the resistors. Over here, you have the battery going to a power inverter. So there would be your power inverter. And that's how you take a wind turbine, produce three phase, Convert to DC, charge a battery, have a controller that anything above the, what the battery can handle or the inverter is set for, diverts it into a load, resistors, and from there, off of your battery, you utilize the energy to make your AC power like you'd use from the wall. So let's get over here. We have, in my case over here, we have, I'm going to be upgrading this one to a 150 amp because of what kind of turbine this is it's the real deal this ain't some junk from the midwest this is a real thing we're going to upgrade from what i normally use in my controllers there's the uh, the opc right there and then this one here is entirely different so it is a full digital model that has different settings you can use a little more aggressive in how it works let me get this thing opened up. I'm going to lay the parts out, and we're going to test it. It's a big one. All right, guys, there it is out of the box. And let me show you over here right quick. We have the blades, and it comes with all the hardware. Now, what it doesn't come with is it doesn't come with a mount for the pole, and then I'll show you about that. Uh, look down, like I said, below the video. I'll put a link to where that one is at. You have to get that mount but look at this, fiberglass, nice, and really well built. This is the nose cone that'll go up on that. Now, diameter is roughly getting close to, I guess, um, it's a little over six feet. Um, so this turbine with these type of blades, this is the dynamic braking design of the blades so that when they get a little bit overspeeded, they'll actually cause a torque effect and it'll push it out of the wind. That's a great design. So about 35 miles per hour, they'll do that.
That would be more, the full power of this thing, or more. Probably hit a thousand watts before it does it. There is the turbine, and over here, I want, I want you to look how big the wire is. And I've grabbed a piece of this. This is 12 gauge. You've seen the Romex before. There's 12 gauge, and this is about eight coming out of here. Now I'm sure it's a Chinese measurement, but it's about eight. Now I suggested to these people that put a flag on it to the country of uh, where it's going. And guess what? They did. Look. Both sides. There's a the flag. <laughs> oh, that was just freaking awesome. So there's the American flag. Yes, made in China. But luckily, it is made in the, some of the best factories they got over there because the one I have up on the roof now that is about half this one's size is pushing two years old, and it's seen some massive storms. Now, this one... Um, it's a basically a 60-40, so you have 40% of the PMA out here, and then you have the big rotor, that is where the magnets are at, and then the rest of it. So the windings will go from about right here to about right there. It's embedded and has a full, complete seal all the way around it. Now, the shaft of this one is huge. It is not like the other one, and it comes with this cut, so make sure you've got a wrench. Don't, don't use channel locks um, to install this on. And it is made to go down onto that hub. Now, that hub's quite large. In the center of it, for the machining process, a 8-millimeter Allen, I guess you call it, or hex, uh, in the center. Now, I've got a drill set up with that. My system is going to use this eventually, but if you've got one singular turbine, one, you don't need anything else. And let me show you what they send with it, and this is going to kind of surprise you. This thing here, 12 volt, 800 watt, which this is the part I like, 15 volt braking, which means I might just, I might use theirs. 13.5 uh, recover voltage. Now, the definition of 13.5 is it'll hit the brakes until the battery drops to 13.5 so that when it releases and takes off again, it don't immediately hit the brakes. And then it's going to give your battery a chance to recover. And uh, re the amount of power this thing uses in idle it's just completely pointless and don't even hardly use any power but what is so cool is how freaking huge that is compared to the ones that come with the little 300 watt turbines so i mean you can do your own comparison there now this thing here's got big feels like roughly eight gauge wires and this one here does have 10 which strangely enough it has 10 gauge and those are eight gauge so it does have heavy wiring, but I don't know about the heat sink factor. This thing is designed to really take a beat. That I like. So, I, I mean, I'm pref preferably I like to use my own design, but I'm going to might try that one. We're set up over here, as I showed earlier. Um, I think I did. Uh, a, uh, a meter and a rectifier and a battery. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to test the turbine. So you want to always test these turbines before you go through the energy of installing them, you want to give them a test. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set my multimeter on AC voltage at about 200. This one's a 12 slash 24 model. So that means when it's against a 12 volt battery, it's going to get about 42, 40, 42 volts. And when it's against a 24 volt battery bank, it's going to hit about 60. And so open voltage, we should hit close to 60 on this one. So it doesn't matter which ones you pick. I'm just going to shove a probe into either one of these and I will test it to see exactly what it's going to do and as far as the uh, the ability here so see if you can get focused in on that all right so they get there we better see that all right now um, I'm going to go ahead and put the drill motor on there and we're going to spin it up and we'll get the voltage test so we're going to try to get close to 60 and you can take a look there because that'll be the open voltage no battery that looks good 56.7 roughly 57 volts that's perfect and then we're just going to change this over to just a different set of wires in the stator right there same effect so you'll see here 56.8 just almost 57 and that's with the 
that's with the drill losing a little battery power. And you heard that thing hit. That tells you that that is a very tight setup. Now, so this does have the full double bearing system in it, the double bearing here. And these, if you look below, I'll put that link to BNC. Now, BNC is the company that is the, uh, the main dealer for these. And they're the ones I would refer for this. And uh, if you have any issues or you need to get this mounting flange from them, be sure that you say so. Now, this is the largest mounting flange. Let me get my tape out. The largest mounting flange they have, which is roughly five and a half inches across. Now, this is made to mount on a two-inch pipe. But if you mount it on a two-inch pipe, it has to be Schedule 40. And it has to be within five feet of where this flange will mount guy wires or some type of support so you need to make sure you do that and when you put a wind turbine up it needs to be at least from the bottom of the blades five feet above any obstacle that's within 75 feet of the wind turbine otherwise you can make this thing make massive amounts of power so you guys stay tuned we're going to get this hooked up to do a power test all right now it took me just a few seconds to realize that that little battery thing it ain't going to do it. And I mean, you look at this big Milwaukee and look how big this thing is. So I'm going to give you a view here of the meter and I'm going to fire it up. And I hope that's clear enough. It's kind of lit up. So I'll kind of get in there and get a best picture, probably about right there. And then I'm going to fire that thing up and you're going to see. Now, this is a very slow RPM. It's not very fast. But it'll give you an idea how we go from this to this to this battery, okay? And that's what we're going to do right now is we're going to just show you a process. And I'm going to have Kira hold this camera right there. And I will power this thing up. Okay, now that is a good test. And this thing here runs at zero to 500 RPMs. And with a uh, load on it, I don't think it's going anywhere near that. So I think it's probably about 450. So what that technically means is that what you just saw, um, and it showed a, let's see here, 6.85 amp peak, 92 watts based off of that. Now. That's not telling you a ton, and I agree with that, because it's very hard to turn this the way that I'm doing it. The other thing is, is that I'm just pushing it against that little battery, and I have little 12-gauge wires coming off of it, so we can keep this battery in tune. But, there you go, guys. Y'all going to see a video of this, and it's going to be a lot bigger, and I'll show you before and after pictures, and I want you to just pay attention. We're going to go through all these processes. And you'd see under the video where I got all these things, and you're going to see these items here. So you're going to see how we take the three-phase, I think you just saw that over there, and how it takes it to DC to the battery. Now from there, we'll have the controller. So technically, that'll be this controller. We'll then sense from the battery, and this SSR here with a heat sink, of course I'll cut that to length, We'll also take a power from the battery and go that direction, and then it'll have two wires that goes back to this controller. So the controller will sense the power, activate the SSR, and divert the load. Kind of the same thing this is going to do, but since I have more than one turbine on my system, we use that process. If you're only going to go with one turbine, the controller they send is shockingly nice. This is a generally simple set up it is the power conversion diversion battery storage of course that the inverter there power conversion and the turbine so if y'all have questions put your questions below the video i'll do the best i can to give you details and answers and if you can't find something let me know what you're looking for and things that i've used before i'll recommend them and show them but there you go turbine rectifier three phase converted to dc battery diverted overload when it hits over the prescribed amount you want, 
and the inverter to take battery power and make into alternating current or like I do mostly power. I run everything like these lights up here on battery power. So y'all have a good day. Come back and see the next video. We're going to do an install.